nine marathons down and a lot of lessons learned along the way. Today I'm going to be narrowing that down and giving you nine of my best lessons that I've learned since running nine marathons. <laughs> So welcome back to another video. Andy, Forrester Dean Runner here, excited to share with you these nine tips that I've learned after running nine marathons. By the way, I've been telling people I've run 10 and I clearly can't count. It's actually nine, but lots of lessons learned along the way and I'm excited to dive in and share what they are. And as always, I'd love to hear from you what your most important lessons are that you've learned since running all the marathons that you guys have run as well. Drop them in the comments below and share those with everyone. Without further ado, we're gonna dive into the list. So if you're excited for today's video, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. Let's start with number one. So number one, it never gets easy you just get a little bit smarter and wiser. So the more marathons you run, the more sort of you start to understand the distance itself, the pitfalls that you might have fallen into previously, and all of that adds up to a little bit more planning, a little bit more kind of a meticulous layout of what your strategy is going to be to avoid that in the future. I ran what I would class as a really good 95% effort marathon recently, uh, and to be brutally honest with you, I said this at the time, I don't think I could have gone any harder. Even on the day, I started a little bit slower to be controlled, but the pain on my face at the end still showed you that 26.2 is a flipping long way and I couldn't have squeezed any more out of myself at the end, even if I would have tried. So it definitely doesn't get easier. 26.2 is a long way, but you just get a little bit smarter and wiser along the way. Number two, the 48 to 72 hour window before your race is absolutely key and critical, in particular for fueling and hydration. Now, training is a different ball game. We all have different styles of tapers. We all taper for different periods and we all do different things in our taper week. But the make or break can be the hydration and the fueling in that final 48 to 72 hours. For me, what I've learned is leading into the week of the race itself, just making sure I'm drinking plenty. But in that 72 hour window, I'm making sure I have hydration drinks every day. And in particular on the night before and the morning of the race, but the two days prior to that as well, making sure I have that. On this occasion, it was precision hydration fueling drink. That's been great. But also I've been dropping in the odd electrolyte tablet every single day of the week. That on top of the hydration drinks I've been drinking has meant that I felt really, really well hydrated. And just cleaning up the diet in the final week is something that I do as well, but I don't change the diet too much. I don't want my stomach to have a completely different type of food hitting it. I just make sure I cut out some of the sugary uh, treats and make sure I save that for after the race. And in particular, the final 72 hours and 48 hours, really, I make sure that I'm eating a good balanced carb and protein meal, not necessarily all the carbs, but a good balance of both to make sure I'm feeling good, feeling full up, and I'm eating a little bit more than normal, but not going too over the top. Number three, fueling can make or break your race. It's happened to me so many times. If you follow the journey, you understand where I'm coming from. Fueling really can make or break your marathon. Having a fueling strategy going into it and having prepared for that throughout your training block is key to making sure those latter miles are, uh, are manageable because let's be honest with you, they're never easy, but they can become manageable. For the first time ever, this recent marathon, they were manageable. They weren't as hard as I ever imagined them and I finished as strong as I guess I could have done and I felt as good walking away from that marathon as I ever have done. And that's been down to practicing fueling and getting my fueling right on the day. It's still not perfect, but this is the idea of running multiple marathons and sharing this lesson with you. These things take a multitude of marathons to get right, but if you make those stepping stones to uh, head in the right direction and get your fueling as close to perfect as you can and keep working on it block after block, then it will be an absolute game changer for you come those final six miles. Number four, shoe choice is absolutely key. Now what I recommend with this is if you have a pair of shoes that are brand new for race day, that's fantastic break them in on a run or two, make sure you're comfortable with them. But if they are gonna be like that, make sure you've run in a previous model or something similar or so that you've done some long runs in them or make sure you feel comfortable. For me, what I like to do in the training block is really dial into that in the last month. Um, 
and use those race shoes or similar to a training partner to them, whatever it might be, a little bit more in the last month but to make sure that you're comfortable with those shoes over the longer distance. You see so many people's races again fall apart because the shoes rub, give you blisters, what have you, uh, because they haven't practiced with them. They're either new straight out of the box or you haven't practiced with them. A lot of the time we can get away with new shoes out of the box, but as we always say, don't try anything new on race day. If it happens to you, good luck, that's fantastic, but it is always good to break them in. So making sure you've got a comfortable pair of shoes that will take you from start to finish uh, is absolutely vital. Number five, a key one, if the elements are against you on race day, adjust your goals. You've got to be flexible on race day. If I've learned anything over the years of running these marathons, it's that you never know what the weather's going to be like. I've run in torrential rain and storms, I've run in heat waves, I've run in everything in between, and you just have to adjust. To be honest with you, I still haven't quite got it right in terms of adjustment, but it's always a learning process. You either have to dial the pace back, you can push a little bit, it depends what the conditions are, but ultimately, knowing that you're going to rock up to race day and having trained through winter and then suddenly it's blazing hot sun or training through the summer and then it's really cold on race day you've just got to adapt to the elements whatever that, that might be wind rain sun you just don't know you can obviously control the controllables you hear that a lot uh, that's the fueling <clears throat> that's your pacing strategy that's keeping yourself calm shoes all of that stuff but the things we can't control means that occasionally we just have to be prepared to adjust. You see a lot of people going, no, do you know what? I don't care what the conditions are. I've trained at this pace. I'm gonna run this pace. They go out on a blistering hot day, make it to 17, 18 miles and absolutely fade into oblivion. It happens, it's happened to me, it happens to so many of us. You've just gotta be adaptable and make sure that if conditions aren't quite what you've been practicing in or aren't quite what you prepared for, to just either dial it back or adjust your race day strategy. Number six, training at marathon pace during your training block is absolutely key. Getting your body used to race pace is vital. Well, for me it is anyway. Not for everybody, but this is something that I've learned that works really well for me along the way. Getting comfortable with what that effort feels like and knowing that you can hold that effort during high mileage weeks means that come taper time, you're feeling really good and you're feeling fresh. That pace feels a little bit easier and comfortable and you stick to it. It worked really well for me during this block and it's worked really well in previous blocks. I've not always executed the races I've wanted to, but at least I know when I go into marathon uh, mode and racing that I know what the effort feels like. So that if that effort to pace feels a little bit too much I know where to dial it back because what happens when you practice marathon pace in training is you also get in tune with your body and learn what the effort feels like meaning that in the previous point if you need to adjust your strategy you can run to marathon effort rather than pace so a multitude of benefits there but definitely learning what the effort feels like to pace is absolutely key tip number seven having a structure accountability coach whatever it is is just great. It's what you need during a marathon training block. I've done training blocks in the past where I've not had a training plan, I've not had any accountability, my weeks have really yo-yoed and you just get to the start line unprepared. A lot of people don't want to have a coach, that's fine, but even just having a plan to guide you or some kind of rough structure can really help elevate your training to the next level. If we rely on our own self-motivation, a lot of us are really motivated and it's great, but some weeks we're just not gonna have that spark there. And sometimes we're just gonna need a little extra push to get out the door. And that little extra push can be the difference between having a really good race over the long course of 16 week training block or not. Because if that happens two or three or four times along the way, it can be a little bit difficult for us to get that motivation back when we feel like, ah, oh, this week hasn't been great, I really need to make up for it this week. We go a little bit too hard in the next week, we get injured, we overdo it, it's a bit of a nightmare. Having that really gentle, steady plan build up is key for accountability, for training sensibly, for training smart, and the whole idea is to get you to the start line feeling as fit and fresh as possible. So absolutely consider it if you haven't already. Number eight, take your recovery tools and products with you to the finish line, or give them to someone you're going to see at the end or put them in your car whatever it is even if it's one of those mini massage guns that's great obviously what we want to do as soon as we finish and not everyone does but i like to have a protein shake or have something decent to get in me i'm often feeling a bit sick and some, sometimes can't stomach anything but as soon as i can i get that in me uh, and then start the recovery process i usually go for food straight afterwards because that's what i want to do but by the time i get back to the car if i've driven i'm always using my massage gun um, a foam roller if i haven't got my massage gun whatever it might be just start that process because what i found over the years of doing that 
and I've only started doing that more recently, is that, that uh, the week past the marathon, the DOMS and the effects of the marathon affect me far less than if I just kind of finish the marathon all tight and stiff and oh, and then I don't do anything with that. If I start to loosen things off straight away with some light stretching, massage gum, it makes the world a difference. Right now when I'm recording this, it's Friday, the week after my marathon, so five days after, and I feel fit and ready to run. Even though I'm not going to, it just feels great. Uh, I've in the past never felt so good before. It is really key to take as much as you can with you to that finish line. Number nine, if you start slow, you finish strong. It really does work. This one's not for the purists out there. Totally understand that. Uh, a lot of people like to go out from the gun and really race it. I get it. But if you're nervous, if you're anxious or you're worried, or you've had a few bad experiences like I have, then don't worry about taking it a little bit slower at the start. It paid dividends for me recently, and I was able to execute a race strategy that I was really, really proud of. And it, what has done has built confidence. It's allowed me to regain a bit of trust in myself over the marathon distance. You start to question yourself when you have bad results, thinking, am I cut out for this distance? Should I not train for this distance? What's going on? But when you start out a little bit slower and you let everyone run off, the feeling <laughs> towards the end when you start passing everyone is unbeatable because you know that you've paced it well, you paced it strong and you're going to get to the finish line feeling accomplished and I genuinely can't recommend that strategy enough. If you're worried about it, worried about the distance, worried about completing it, do not hesitate. Just put the brakes on for the first two or three miles and just ease yourself into it. It's a really good racing strategy. So there we go, nine marathons under my belt and nine top tips there. I hope you found them useful. And as I said in the intro, if you've got any tips you wanna share with people, don't forget to drop them below. I know what some of you are gonna comment, tape your nipples up. I used Body Glide in my most recent marathon and I came away with bloody nipples on a white vest. It happens, the Body Glide failed me. Plasters or tape are the way to go, clearly. So I'll remember that one, there's a bonus 10th one for you. If you have any other tips, make sure you drop them in the comments below. Share it with everyone and let everyone pick up your tips so that they can implement them into their next race. That's it from me today, guys. A really exciting vlog coming up next. London Marathon spectating, doing some filming. Can't wait to get out there. So stay tuned for that one. If you enjoyed today's video though, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. I'll see you on the next one. Until then.